All right, so welcome back to another day out in the shop. Today we kind of got our pipe rearranged to throw back on the crossfire here, and hopefully we'll get much further than that. So we've probably already watched me make the first pipe, so that's not a big thing to deal with there. We've got leftover wrap to throw back on it, and hopefully we'll have a much better setup of this second time around. So yeah, let's just go and take a look at the pipe here and see the differences. Alright, so essentially as you see the pipe down there, that's how it sat in the vehicle. So this is how much further up I managed to get that. There's a small kind of movement there because the uh, main pulley for the crank is right there, probably about maybe inch and a half away from touching it. So hopefully with the wrap, we'll be sitting in there pretty good and we won't have to be melting our belt. So. Anyways, I've got to wrap this thing and shove it back on the car. Then we can start tackling some of the more necessary things. All right, so we got the pipe in there. And as you can tell, it is much higher than it used to be. Previously, it went under The torsion bar, sway bar. Now it's roughly even. Got just enough space around the pulley. So we should be pretty well set up. So now I think the lowest part up in here in the front is that oil pan that's sticking down. So I think I'm going to, there's this cross member here. I think I'm going to build that down a little bit so it can act as a kind of a bash guard for the oil pan. And then that'll also give us a point that we can lock into with our front splitter. Because if you look over here, it's a little difficult to see, but these spots where the A-arm attaches is down a little bit. So I think I can come across with some sort of piece of metal And we can tie that in. That'll probably be the easiest. So I guess we'll have to do some measuring and some plasma cuttering. But yeah, we're a little bit closer. All right, so my transmission leak, I am thinking, is from this plate. As you can see, I have temporary bolts in there that I forgot to swap out for the actual bolt. Because so I think I misplaced where I put the bolt. So, I'm going to remove these bolts again, make sure it's sealed up, and hopefully that solves the problem. If not, I guess I'll be back in here digging around again. At least that's one benefit to making the side panels removable. Just drill out a couple rivets and full access. All right, well here's the bracket. And if you look, see if we can get it zoomed in here to see anything. You can see some transmission fluid 
on the surface, which that's supposed to be a seal and not transmission fluid. So, I think we definitely found a source of a leak. Hopefully it's the source, because this was gonna be pretty simple to solve. Mmm, transmission. Now in an ideal situation, I would make a uh, oil fill on the top here. Or at least I should, maybe I'll do that, make an access hole right here so I can fill up transmission fluid right from this location. I think I might actually do that. That would actually be very simple. Just come in through here and, yep, there we go. Just come in down here, drill a much bigger hole, get a cork or something. Cause that's very difficult to get to. All right. All right, so after we got that sealed up again, we need to do just a little bit of hopefully uh, heat resistorizing things. So inside the transmission tunnel, which this is a piece of it, I put in some of this kind of foam foil back insulator stuff. It's good for about 200 degrees which should be just perfectly fine for a transmission tunnel because all of that goes by it is a transmission. And that sure shouldn't be 200 degrees. So, that and my leg has touched this and it's definitely not 200 degrees. Anyways, I'd probably say it's about 130. But we got that for the transmission tunnel. I also put some of it on the roof, a couple of pieces on the firewall, and then on the piece that goes by the turbo downpipe, I got some of this DEI reflective heat stuff. It's not thick at all like this other stuff, so it probably doesn't have any insulation factor, but it should have some reflective factor. So hopefully that will cool down a little bit around the turbo. I'm going to probably try out a couple other smaller things for uh, just the heck of it. But other than that, this is about where we're at. So we got this hole drilled in here. And I've got a cap sitting around somewhere in this garage. It'll slide right in there. And that will allow us access to the filler tube for the transmission. Because uh, when I had that transmission leak that I was trying to take care of, I had to jack up the side of the car and weasel a pipe around through. It was not fun, so this is going to make it a lot easier. There we go, found my plastic cap. And we pretty much just nail it in there. Now we're good to go. So we can punch that out anytime we need to fill up the uh, oil in the transmission. So that will be pretty good. Definitely doesn't come out very easy, so that's positive. All right, that shall work. Now I'll just have to Probably put the spark plugs back in it and maybe take it for a test drive and make sure that that transmission leak has stopped. And then I'll put all the panels back in and we can move on to another aspect of this build. So 
Anyways, thank you for stopping by. If you did, I'm gonna cross some things off on our list here, hopefully, and we can carry on, and we can probably start working on the car hauler and the uh, little mini boat that we're planning. So, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned to see some of that stuff. And I guess we'll just have to see you again later.